Welcome to the Eastern Community Access Television and the Old Time TV Show. An eclectic collection of classic comedy, drama, and variety shows. Join us as we travel back in time to the earliest days of broadcast television. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Old Time TV Show. This month we are featuring Racket Squad, a crime drama series that aired from 1951 to 1953. Episodes were introduced and narrated by Reed Hadley as Captain John Braddock, a detective working in an unnamed American city. The series dramatized how criminals and con men deceived their victims and also demonstrated the various methods law enforcement used to catch them. Episodes were actually based on case files from various police departments and other agencies. The episodes we are featuring are Season 1, Episode 5, Heaven for Sale, in season three, episode 15, The Christmas Caper. So sit back and enjoy this unique procedural drama. This is Racket Squad. about to see is a real-life story taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads business protective associations and similar sources all over the country it is intended to expose the confidence game the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence Captain Braddock Captain Braddock ready Working with the racket squad, I've arrested every type of swindler. And I've even had to handcuff ghosts. But I'm getting ahead of my story. I call this particular file heaven for sale. And that's exactly what the swindlers try to sell. An imitation bit of heaven. Contact with the hereafter. One rainy day a short time ago, a middle-aged man came into my office. Captain Braddock. Yes. Oh, want to get rid of these wet things? Thank you. Miserable weather, isn't it? Yes, I... I don't mind the rain. Fact is, I don't mind much of anything lately. You sound as though you're having a little trouble. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Captain, I suspect I've made a fool of myself. <laughs> we all have at one time or another. What's your brand of mistake or mistakes? About a year ago, I gave my daughter Mary a convertible for her birthday. What she really wanted was a diamond necklace that had belonged to her mother. By giving her the car instead of the necklace, I caused her death. A horrible accident. Is there uh, anything you want before I go out, Mr. Blanchard? No, Katie. Well, may, more wood on the fire, maybe? Don't bother. I, I'm going to bed soon, anyway. May I say something? Of course. I can't stand it any longer, seeing you like this, grieving all the time. It's been nearly a year now. I can't help it, Katie. I, I keep blaming myself. If only I hadn't given Mary that car. But it doesn't do any good to reproach yourself. Let's not talk about it, shall we? By the way, this is the third night you've taken off this week. Where have you been going? I hope you'll understand. I have been attending seances. I thought it might be possible to contact Mary at a spiritualist meeting. I wanted to find some way to console you. Sit down, Katie. You know, I don't take much stock in that kind of thing, Katie, but uh, tell me about it. Well, I didn't believe it myself at first, but now I haven't any doubt. I saw spirits materialized with my own eyes. How much did it cost? They said you could give anything you want for a donation. Most people gave two dollars, so I did too. 
Just throwing your money away. Oh, no. It was worth it. The medium was marvelous. She put her husband in a trance. They brought spirits into the room. I saw them myself. White and rigid. And they knew some of the people there. Actually talked to them. You're not going to tell me that Mary's spirit was among them? Well, uh, no. But I asked Mr. and Mrs. Carvin if... Who are they? The mediums. I asked them if they could materialize Mary, and they said they would try. They said it would be easier to reach her if you were present. At what price? Oh, they didn't say anything about money. Oh, Mr. Blanchard, why don't you come along and see for yourself if there is anything to it? I'm afraid I'd only be disappointed, Katie. But imagine, Mr. Blanchard, just imagine how wonderful it would be if you could see and talk to Mary's spirit. Very well. Just out of curiosity, I'll take you. Wait till I get my hat. Good evening. Well, well I wouldn't nice miss this for anything in the world. Well, well, how are you? We'll be with you in a moment. Well, good yeah. evening. I see you've brought a guest. Yes, this is Mr. Blanchard, my employer. Mr. and Mrs. Carson. Good to have you with us, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to meet you. So nice of you to come. I understand you accept donations. I don't want to accept anything on your first visit. Well, it's about time for the meeting. We'll get chairs for you. Come right on in. Since uh, this is your first visit here, perhaps you'd like to see the arrangements. If you don't mind. Right in, Mr. Blanchard. We want you to satisfy yourself that everything is above board. The spirits that choose to favor us materialize in here. As you can see, no living person can get through the screen. Why, Mr. Blanchard, you appear somewhat skeptical. You're determined that no trickery is going to take you in. But everything so far looks all right, doesn't it? And Mr. and Mrs. Carpin seem like such a sincere, honest couple. Careful, Mr. Blanchard. In spite of yourself, you're beginning to weaken. Not much to be sure, and yet you're willing to be sure. It looks all right to me. Thank you. This way, please. Friends, if conditions are right tonight, some of you will see manifestations from the other world. If there are any doubters or skeptics among you, our task will be difficult. I ask you all to concentrate on the memories of your loved ones who have gone beyond. This isn't quite what you expected, is it, Mr. Blanchard? Nothing suspicious so far, is there? But wait. Sleep. An Egyptian control has taken possession of his body. He speaks in an ancient dialect of which I know only a few words. Can you give us names? Even first names of departed. Yes. Yes. Oh, light. No. No light. Yes. No light. Light. He says yes, but he wants the lights extinguished. Concentrate, friends. Concentrate. Think of those dear ones who have gone beyond. Dad, I'm here. This is Grace. Does anyone here know a Grace? Is her father present? Wait a minute. She may mean me. I must warn you. Don't touch her. But I, I can see her. What you see is ectoplasm. 
It comes from Mr. Carson. To contact that ectoplasm with human hand would mean his death instantly. Grace, do you recognize me? Yes. I've been trying to reach you. I'm glad you did. Grace, what is heaven like? Peaceful. Like a lovely garden. I've often wondered what it was like. Father, I have a friend near me. She's trying to get through to someone here. Her name is Mary. My daughter says there's a Mary trying to reach someone. Ask her if it's Mary Blanchard. Yes. That is her name. But she can't get through. She'll keep trying. And now, goodbye, Father. I'm being called back. Goodbye, my dear one. Friends, I regret the contact with the spirit world has been broken. The control has left Mr. Carthen. He is coming out of his trance. I'm going to speak to Mrs. Carpen. You'll pardon me, but what prevented my daughter from materializing? I wish I knew. There are cosmic forces that we do not fully understand. Do you think it possible she may appear during another seance? The signs were very encouraging. I hope that you'll join us again. Thank you. Nothing will set my mind at rest until I find out for sure. Good night. Do you think Mr. Blanchard will be convinced? I do. We believe what we want to believe. And when our hearts are heavy, we're ready to accept anything that relieves our pain. In a moment, we'll follow up the case of heaven for sale. And now let's see what happens when Mr. Blanchard arrives at the place where the seance is to be held. What do you think now, Mr. Blanchard? Amazing, wasn't it? Mary was trying to get through to you. A friendly spirit relayed the message. There was no way for this friendly spirit to know you were in the room. So here you are, back again the following night, wondering if Mary will be able to break the mystic bonds that separate her from you. Look, Mr. Blanchard, look. What do you see? Your heart is pounding. Chills race up and down your spine. Mary. Mary, darling, if it's, if it's really you, give me some word, some sign, so I'll be sure. The accident wasn't your fault. I drove too fast. Is there anything you want, anything I can do for you? Yes, there is something. What is it, darling? Anything you want, anything. Mother's diamond necklace. Are you sure? Can you wear it there? Of course, Dad. Heaven's no different than Earth. Only more beautiful. All right, precious, you shall have it. Thank you, and goodbye. Now you're convinced, Mr. Blanchard. You've been back many times. Oh, they couldn't always contact Mary, but the difficulties made it more convincing. So you've decided to fulfill Mary's one wish. What sad and tender memories it holds. A gift to your wife on your first wedding anniversary. How she loved it. And when she was taken from you, you put it aside for Mary. Your conscience hurts because you didn't give it to Mary on her birthday. You gave her a new car instead. But you have a chance to atone now, Mr. Blanchard. Although in another world, Mary still wants that necklace. Are you ready now, Mr. Blanchard? Yes, Katie. Dad, you're here. I've been waiting. Happy birthday, precious. I'm so glad you came. I brought something for you. Don't try to touch her. You'll break the spirit contact. But how can I give her the necklace? It's in my pocket. I'll release your hand. 
hold it out to her, but don't try to touch her. to a higher plane, out of reach of earthly things. Goodbye, dearest death. Mary, wait. Wait! You're worried, Mr. Blanchard. Mary is gone, and so is the necklace. Suppose it wasn't Mary's spirit after all. Suppose... Katie! Did you call me? Yes. Katie, I've been going over something in my mind. How much did you tell Mr. and Mrs. Carpenter about Mary? Well, just a little. I don't remember exactly. Did they ask any questions about me? Well, let me think. I, I'm not so sure, but it's possible. Not only possible, but probable. Oh, well, we won't say any more about it. Well, I hope I, I didn't do anything wrong. I... I didn't mean to. No, no. It's just that there's something I don't understand. I, I'm confused, that's all. I went back several times, and Mr. and Mrs. Carpenter said they would try their best to materialize her. But the spirit control said it would be impossible. I shouldn't wonder. They got what they wanted from you and were shrewd enough to stop there. Are you willing to sign a complaint if I can produce evidence the Carpenter outfit is a fraud? You're positive they're crooks? Certain of it, aren't you? Yes, it looks like it, but I must admit I'm still a little mixed up. You'd be surprised how many intelligent people are hoodwinked by these clever fakers. If you'll cooperate, I'll get a search warrant. All right. But then? Tonight we'll attend a seance. You'll take me in as a friend. I'd never go right on in. Well, you're back again. Glad to see you. I brought a friend of mine along, Mr. Braddock. How friend do you do? Glad to have you with us. Mr. Blanchard has told me how interesting your meetings are. We sometimes get very fortunate results. I'll pay for both of us. Thank you. Of course, you realize these donations are voluntary. Of course. Won't you go in? Thank you. Friends? We will do our best to contact the spirit world tonight. And I hope there will be some manifestation. When Mr. Garpin is in a state of trance, a friendly spirit control has taken possession of his body. This spirit acts as a guide to bring other spirits among us. Your mortal consciousness is slipping away. Sleep. Me. Me, Chief Kuoko. We are about to begin. An Indian spirit control has taken possession. Once it was an Egyptian. This is Stella. Does anyone here know a Stella? I had a sister named Stella. I'd like to find out if... Come forward. You'll soon know. Was your last name Reynolds? Yes, dear sister. Have you seen Mother? I'm with her all the time. I'll tell Father. It will make him very happy. He's been quite ill lately. He mustn't worry. He'll be well soon. Oh, I'm so grateful. And now I'm being called back. Goodbye, dear. Shall I see you again? D don't go yet. Somebody's been asking for me. I'm Sam. The guide has brought us a Navy man named Sam. 
Has he any friends or relatives present? I had a buddy on the service named Sam. You wish to speak to him? You bet I do. It's a strong grip you have, Mrs. Carpenter. Don't try to free your hand. Don't try to touch the spirit. If you do, Mr. Carpenter will die instantly. You don't say. We wouldn't want anything to happen to Mr. Carpenter. Sam, do you know who I am? Why, Skipper, of course. I'm happy you're here. We're all very happy. But what's my name? Your name is... But I always just called you Skipper. You're antagonizing the spirit. He'll disappear if you aren't careful. I'm sorry. Don't go away, Sam. What ship were we on? Sam, don't you remember? It was in the Battle of Leyte Gulf. A destroyer was bombed. You died in my arms. Now I remember. I thought you would. But there's one little hit, Sam. What, Skipper? I was never in the Navy. I was in the Air Force. You're breaking the spell. And you're breaking no. the law, Mrs. Cohen. No. I'm Captain Braddock of the Rocket no. Squad. Oh, no. Help! 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 Why don't you turn on the lights over? Open the door. Thanks, Connie. Please, don't let anyone leave. I have something important to say to you. The police are persecuting these nice people. If you people will please be patient a few minutes, I'll show you how it was done. Don't you believe him? Friends, the police are just trying to discredit me. What about the diamond necklace you tricked Mr. Blanchett into giving to his daughter's ghost? Do you call that legitimate? He had every right to give it to her. Not when it's a conspiracy on your part to commit fraud. Prove it. I intend to. I imagine you've all examined this wire screen. Looks foolproof, doesn't it? But unless I'm mistaken, there's a trap door on the floor through which the spirits materialize. You'll find no trap door there, Mr. Policeman. What happens here is pure psychic phenomena. Carter, come here a minute, will you? Yes, sir. Go outside and see if you can find a basement ventilator. Right. You see, I told you the police were mistaken. <laughs> hey, Brad, I got him. Come on up. Get up here, sir. Hello, Mary Stella. Stand over there. Well, if it isn't Sam, how are you, shipmate? Dry up, copper. Your hunch was right, Brad. I squeezed through a vent in the basement and found these two hiding. Good work, Carter. And locks from underneath. Opens and closes by remote control. And I think I know where it leads. Oh, here we are. Well, we know how that works. Let's see what else we have here. In the darkness, the direction from which sounds come is deceptive. And that's how our magic trumpet appeared. It's covered with ordinary phosphorus. Why, the cheap crooks, they had me believing the Tommy Rock. People who are bereaved are the chief victims of this racket. Let me give you a little demonstration of how it was done. Sergeant Carter, take Mary Stella into the alcove. Lights out, please. A small rheostat controls that light, which brings our friendly spirit into being. She's wearing gauze treated with luminous paint. That's your so-called ectoplasm. Lights, please. And that's how they took you in. Just a minute, Sam. You shouldn't interrupt like that, Sam. I hadn't quite finished. Come over here, young lady. Mr. Blanchard, would you mind joining us? What did you do with the diamond necklace he gave you? Don't answer him, Blanche. Oh, so your name is Blanche, not Grace or Mary or Stella. You understand a serious charge involves you, don't you? If it's any of your business, I hopped it. What did you do with the money? I split it with Mr. and Mrs. Carpen. Shut your mouth, you silly little fool! What's the difference? They've got us, haven't they? My poor child, what got you into a dishonest thing like this? Money, Pop. Just plain hard cash from suckers like you. It's easier than working for a living. Take them away, Connie.
mediums in this case went to prison for fraud, along with shipmate Sam and his girlfriend, who liked diamonds. Mr. Blanchard was able to get his necklace back, in which he was more fortunate than other victims. But don't think that this cruel sham could only happen to the other fellow. If you get into the clutches of mediums, it could happen to you. I'm closing this case now, or rather the courts will. But there'll be others, because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock, Captain Braddock, ready. Tonight, I'm going to tell you a story that's a little different from the ones you've been seeing. It exposes a racket just as the others have done. And it's a nasty racket that takes hard-earned money from honest people and puts it into the pockets of thieves. But still, it's a different story. First, because it's a Christmas story. And second, because it put me on a spot I never want to be put on again. I had to arrest Santa Claus. Now, the story begins a few days before Christmas, over in the tenement district, where an old man named Charles Dooley lived alone with his dog. But he hardly ever wanted for human company. Hi! 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 Children. Want to play, Mr. Dooley? Well, of course. I always want to play. Let's play Johnny on the Pony. Okay. Okay, we play that. We... Wait a minute. What's Johnny on the Pony? You get down on the floor and we all jump on you. Yeah! yeah. No, sir. That's another name for razzle-dazzle. You don't catch me in that again. What's the matter, Mr. Dooley? Can't you take it? What do you mean? Your Uncle Dooley's strong as an ox. Feel that muscle there. Huh? Mush. You... I'm Mush. Dooley, Mush. Mush. I'm Dooley, Mush. Dooley, Mush. Dooley, Mush. Dooley, Mush. you, you. Come on. Real quick, follow the leader. I like a... To me, Uncle Dooley, will you please? Well, of course I will, darling. I'll certainly read to you. Yeah, reading don't take no muscles. 
Oh, you. And you know, I've got a special story. I've been saving it just for you. A visit from St. Nicholas. How's that? It sounds like a lot of bunk to me. Oh, Grover, I'm ashamed of you. Now, come on, kids. Sit down here and all be quiet. That's right. And, Monster, this is for you, too. You sit there and be quiet like the rest of them. All right. Here we go. Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in the hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all and to all a good night. St. Nicholas? Who's he? Why, well, St. Nicholas, that, that's Santa Claus who brings presents to good children every year. Yeah. Us kids never get Christmas presents. Oh, of course you do. You uh, Didn't you get anything last year? Sure. My mom had my shoes resold. <laughs> I got vitamin pills. See what I mean? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Uh, well, uh, maybe that was because you didn't write to him. You have to write to him? Well, of course you do. How else would he know what you wanted? Now he tells us. I don't know how to write, Uncle Dooley. Would you write for me? Well, of course I would, Princess. I'm... Me too. Me, me, me too. too. No, 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 no. Wait a minute, children. It, it, it's, it's pretty late to write to Santa Claus this year, you see, because he lives clear up at the North Pole, and that's an awful long, long way away. What's the matter with their mail? Uh, no, there's nothing the matter with the airmail. Um... All right. Well, maybe there really is a Santa Claus now. Well, of course there's a Santa Claus. Then we'll get everything we ask for. Oh, now, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. That depends. That, de that depends on how good you are, and, and it depends on how busy Santa Claus is, and all well, that depends on a lot of things. But I, I guarantee you this, you all will get some presents. Now, come on, tell me one at a time, what would you like? Electric train, boxing gloves, coaster, watch. Oh, good evening, Miss Scarpita. Won't you, won't you come in and sit down, please? Oh, no, thank you. I'll be just a minute. Mr. Dooley, the other parents, they sent me to see you about, well, about telling the children that they're going to get Christmas presents. I know you mean well, Mr. Dooley, but it's a terrible problem for us. Of course it isn't. Me and my big mouth. And it's only because they didn't get any presents last year. And Oh, they get few little things. Things they can wear. That's all the families can afford. But now, now they expect very expensive presents. We don't know what to do about it. Well, look, I'll, I'll talk to them again and I'll... I'll... No, wait a minute. I'll, I'll figure something out, because, honest, I'd, I'd rather lose my right arm and see those kids disappointed. Oh, don't be too upset, Mr. Dooley. Children forget their disappointments quickly, and they bounce back much quicker than grown-ups do, eh? Yeah, but of course, Christmas is time for joy, not for disappointment. Well, I gotta go now. It's way past Anna Maria's bedtime. Oh. Anna Maria said to say good night. Oh, she's my little sweetheart. You say good night for me. I will. <laughs> good night, Mr. Dooley, eh? Good night. Hey, monster. Monster. I've got it. I've got it. Mm. Lumbago or no lumbago, I'm going to get a job the next few days and earn the money. That's what I'll do. Here we are. Help wanted mail. Dishwasher. No, oh, I can do that. A dish... No. This to be under 50. Here. Here's something. Elderly men. Elderly men. You can earn extra money for Christmas. Easy work. Apply at once to the Yule Tide Agency, 409 East 23rd Street. Oh, 
Excuse me, did, did you advertise in the paper for... Oh, yes, uh, step right in. Uh, Mr... Uh, Dooley, Charles Evans Dooley. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dooley? I'm Mr. Smith, and it's my partner, Mr. Jones. How do you do, Mr. Dooley? Hello, Mr. Jones, I'm happy to uh, sit down. Thank you very much. I, uh, well, I, I certainly would be interested in some of that extra Christmas money that you well, mentioned uh, in the ad. I think we might be able to do something for you there. What do you say, Elmer? Well, I think he'll do, dressed up. Sure. Uh, dressed up? What would I have to do? Well, uh, you know these uh, Santa Clauses you see on the streets during Christmas time, you know, the ones with the big pots. Yeah, oh, well, now, you shouldn't make fun of a man because he's a little fat because <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well he, he means uh, an iron kettle to collect money for charity. Oh, oh, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, we supply these Santa Clauses for the various charities around town. Oh, oh, well, you, you mean I'd be the jolly little fat man with the bell? And, oh, well, now, look, watch. <clears throat> Jingle, jingle, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> what do you say, Elmer? Well, I think it'd be all right, Ross. <laughs> oh, how much money would I earn, sir? Well, the usual salary, $10 a day. $10 a day? Oh, that's wonderful. I, I didn't expect to earn that much. And a bonus. If your daily collections are good. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have the money rolling in, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, it sure be good going home every night with some money in my pocket. Well, uh, not every night, Mr. Dooley. You see, these charities you and uh, our other Santa Clauses work for, why, they uh, pay when your work is finished, on Christmas Eve. Oh, on Chris oh, that's all right. That's all right. As long as I have time to do some important shopping before the stores close. Just be here Christmas Eve, 7 o'clock sharp, with your Santa Claus suit and kettle. You'll get your money. Yeah, 7 o'clock with this suit and the kettle. Of... <laughs> I'll be here ringing my bell. All right, get him a suit, Albert. Right now, uh, Mr. Dooley, just for our records here, I'd, uh, I'd like to have your address, please. Oh, yes. 214 East Bronson. Yeah, right. I think you ought to fit into this, all right? Oh, oh I'll fit into that, all right. You see. Look, I can... <laughs> Merry Christmas! Oh, 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 Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Something for the deserving children. Thank you and bless you. Merry Christmas! Jingle bells! <laughs> Society oh. for the deserving poor children, eh? That's correct, sir. Merry... Uh, who put you out here? Boy, I belong out here. I'm Santa Claus. Ho, 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 ho. I'm very serious about this. Who are you working for? Why, I work for all the deserving children in the world. You know, Christmas is made for children, sir. You won't regret what you've given. Thank you very much, and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Well, what do you think of that monster? A doubting Thomas. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Give something, gentlemen, would you like to give something to the dessert? Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. How, how, how am I doing, huh? Pretty good? Mr. Dooley, you're going to have to work a lot harder if you want to get that extra bonus. Oh. Now, you're falling way behind all the rest of our other Santa Clauses. I am. You've got to snap out of it, you know, show some enthusiasm. Oh. You know, keep ringing that bell. That's yes. what brings the money in. Well, I, I will. I, I've been ringing it. All right, you're open it up. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. I, I promise you I will. I'll... I'll, I'll be the top Santa Claus. You see if I'm not. All right, you better be. I want you to be. I want you to get a nice, big, fat bonus. Yeah. Come on, open it. All right, sir. There you are. I, I thought that was pretty good, but I'll keep ringing. I tried to find out something about the charity this bogus Santa Claus was working for. And he gave me nothing but that ho, ho, ho business. I'm Santa Claus. Like I was a child. I'd say that he was senile, except for the fact that he seemed smart enough to work a vicious racket. And you're sure there's no such charity as the Society for Deserving Children? Captain Braddock, as chairman of the Conference of Organized Charities in this city, I'm positive there is no such society. Then it's a racket, no doubt about that. You've got to get that old man off the street, Captain. Yes, but whoever put that old man there may be doing this thing on a large scale with a whole slew of old men out on the streets. Now, that's an angle worth considering. It's vicious. Giving legitimate charities a black eye. I never dreamed such a thing could happen. It's the first time I've heard of it too, Mr. Hastings, and I've heard of a lot of contemptible rackets. Excuse me. Steve? Yes? Get me six men on plainclothes detail for tomorrow morning first thing. Yes, sir. Thanks. You'll be doing the legitimate charities a great favor, Captain Braddock. I know, and I'm going on this thing myself, Mr. Hastings, to supervise it personally. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.
your last day to give something to the deserving children. Jingle bells, last day, folks. Remember the deserving children. Jingle bells, everyone. Merry hello, hello, Mrs. Smith. Oh, look here. You're going to be proud of me today. But I, I couldn't have done it without the monster here. <laughs> Open it up. Yeah. Oh, I don't really. I guess I'll get my bonus all right, huh? Come on. Hurry up. There we are. There we are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There we are. We, we will get the bonus, won't we? Sure. Uh, listen. Uh, Lock it up and bring the whole thing up to the office right away. Lock it up and bring up to your office right away. Oh, all right. I will. What are you thinking? We're going to get our bonus. We're going to get... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Cars across the street. Let's take a ride downtown. What for? Look, mister, don't play innocent. I am innocent. I'm just an honest businessman on his way home from work. I think you got the wrong party. What's in that briefcase? Open it up. Look, not a thing. I'm telling you, you got the wrong party. Then you can sue us and the city, too. What do you want? Uh, clean up the office later. Come back later, will you? Don't get sold, Mr. Castle. Anything wrong? Go on, will you? Uh, is business bad? No. What kind of business you fellas in? We build fires for people to throw logs on. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Your name, Castle? What is it? Police officer. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, visiting here, officer. You see, uh... That's Castle, all right. I know there's something crooked about this business. You better hold him. Padlock. What do you keep in the drawer? Like I said, this is my office. That man's lying. Open it. You want me to make you open it? Pull it out. All the way. Sweet charity. All right, take it out and carry it. It's too heavy. For a big, strong boy like you? Oh, for shame. Down, Rover. Now on the double. Your partner's getting lonesome. Oh, phew. I never walked so far in all my life. Oh, my. Come on, monster, sit down. Either the two gentlemen in? Nope. Well, that's funny. They, they should be. They should be in jail, and that's where they are. Jail? What for? Well, the way I figured it out, those two was running a phony Santa Claus racket, keeping the money still turning it over to charity. Oh, no. No. You don't, you don't mean that, do you? Yes, sir. But, but, but that money I collected was for charity, if it was for the deserving children. Merry Christmas to all the deserving children. But all the crooks. The dirty crooks. I'll bet you they never even expected to pay me a penny either, let alone a bonus. Oh, but my money. I, I've got to get my money to, to buy presents for the kids. What am, what am I going to do about the kids? Don't look at me. I've got my own kids to worry about. But I... Why not? Why not? What are you going to do now? This money was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? Well, the kids that I'm buying presents for are deserving children. They're the gosh darnest deserving kids in this town. And I'm going to get to them before the stores are closed. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. You bet you my kids are as deserving as any. Here, you've got some deserving kids, too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And, Monster, it's going to be a Merry Christmas. I'll tell you that. Now, you say in this confession that you picked up the money from the kettles every night. 
What happened to the money you took in today? I left mine in that drawer. I mean you, Pennington. One of the old men's got it, uh, Mr. Dooley. I dumped the whole day's take in his kettle and told him to take it right up to the office. Steve, has Joe come in yet? He's on his way in, sir. Good. Chief, there's no sign of old man Dooley up at that office. But get this. I saw the janitor, and he told me that the old man made off with a dough. How do you like that? I don't. We'd better pick him up, too, Joe. Uh, you said you had the names and addresses of all the old men who work for you. Where does Dooley live? Here's something your boys missed. Oh, here it is. 214 East Bronson. Now, everybody be quiet, eh? Santa Claus has taken all the presents to Mr. Dooley's room. And as soon as we hear the bell, it means that he has come. Oh, there it is now. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hello, children. Merry Christmas. Presents for everyone. Come on, darling. Presents for everyone. Where's my Uncle Dooley? Oh, your Uncle Dooley, darling. He's up on the roof. He's holding my reindeer for me. Well, he'll be right back. That's Gee, then you're really Santa Claus? Well, of course I'm Santa Claus in the all-too-corpulent flesh. Ho, 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 ho. But don't you want to hear about your presents? Yeah. Well, I I've got a list somewhere. If I can only find that list, I... That's it. That's my list. Now, let me read this out. Uh-huh. Excuse me, is that Mr. Charles Dooley? Yes. Isn't he wonderful? Now, let me see. An old gift I remember. Anna Marie, you wanted a little dolly, didn't you, in a carriage? Well, here you are, darling. All for you. Go on. Take it away. <laughs> and now, Grover? Say, how do you know our names? I know all the names of good little boys and girls. Besides, I got this list airmail, remember? Now, here. Here's a watch for you, Grover. Uh, and Madeline, that's your sled, dear. Go on, take it away. <laughs> Teddy, here, here's your train. It's not electrical. I thought that might be dangerous, but you can push that around. And here, Ronnie, there are your boxing gloves. And you, Joni, you wanted a dolly in a carriage, too. Well, there it is, darling. It's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> and now, there are presents for the parents under the tree. Well, Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Welcome to the party. We talk to you outside. Oh, sure. What? Police officer. Well, we'll have to take you in, Charlie. I'm sorry, but... Oh, that's all right. I I know I spent money that wasn't mine. But I heard that those men that I was working for... You can for... tell all that to the magistrate, Charlie. Well, I, oh, I'm, I'm coming along with you, but if I could just have one minute. Just, just one minute. I've got a last present to hand out, and it, it's an There's awful... a charge against you, Charlie. We haven't got time to wait. No. For... All right, go ahead. We'll wait. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, uh, could, could I have your attention just a minute, uh, children, too, please? I, uh, there is one last present I've got here, and to me it's the most important because cause it's for my little Anna Marie. And she's always been, and I, I think you know the reason why, always been the closest to my heart. Uh, Miss Scarpita, in, in this envelope, you'll, you'll find some money, at, at least enough to start a fund to get a good doctor and make her legs well. God bless you. And I, I hope they'll do the trick, little sweetheart. And I know it will, because you deserve so much to be well. Oh, thank you, Santa Claus. You're a real sweet man, just like my Uncle Dooley. Thank you, darling. Well, Santa Claus has got to be getting on now. And incidentally, I, I'm i going to take your Uncle Dooley with me for just a little while up to the North Pole. Uh, not for very long. I, I just want him to help me get my, my toy shop started, that's all. I'll send him back to you very soon. Uh, how about a Christmas carol? Ready, officer. 
But I want you to know something first. I didn't steal all of that money. Some of it was mine for work honestly done. Look, Charlie, you stole some money, and the law says... Wait a minute, Joe. I think you've got the facts a little twisted in this case. Mr. Dooley didn't steal any money. Chief, are you well, all right? The money he used for the presents was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? To make Christmas happy for them? Well, sure, but... Well, it seems to me that Mr. Dooley made Christmas happy for some very deserving children. Don't you think so, Joe? I make it a point never to argue with the boss. Here. I want you to add this to the fund for Anna Marie. With best wishes from... from a friend. Will you do that? Yeah, I'll do that. You're a good friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you to this very nice officer. Mr. Dooley, this is Joe Seidel, and he wants to contribute to Anna Marie's fund, too. Huh? Don't you, Joe? Oh, well, sure. Of course, Chief. I said I'd make it a point never to argue with the boss. I hope she gets well real fast. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Dooley. Well, that's I managed to avoid arresting Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. I figured I'd fulfilled the letter as well as the spirit of the law when I took in Ross Pennington and Elmer Castle. They'll be on the receiving end of a different kind of charity for a while. The state will furnish their board and lodging with a little hard labor thrown in just to remind them that they couldn't get away with their new kind of racket. A racket that was more than just against the law. It was a parasite that fed on one of the finest charities we know, the street corner Santa Claus. I'm sure there aren't any other crooks as low as Pennington and Castle. So during the Christmas season, give freely to the men in the red suits. They're all working hard for legitimate charities. Closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station. names and places in tonight's story have been changed for obvious reasons. And any resemblance to other people and places is purely coincidental. Our story is presented to expose the confidence game and is never intended to reflect in any way upon honest, legitimate businessmen.